morning everybody it's monday october 10th and ed is going to try to take everybody through the artificial insemination steps again um we went to john and maria Katz's open house at bedlam farm over the weekend and we were surprised at the number of people that said they were introduced to our blog through maria's video of ed artificially inseminating one of the cows in the milking parlor. So we are in the utility room where he keeps his semen tank and he's going to try to explain to you what he's doing. Okay, first of all, when I go to inseminate a cow, just something quick about how I know a cow is in heat. Nicole, who we're going to breed today, uh, was walking the fence last night. So I had the invocation she was doing something out of the ordinary. Then this morning we come out and actually she was still walking the fence, but the bull we have uh, out back had gotten from his pasture into another pasture, so he was closer. And they allow other cows to do what they call mount them. In other words, jump on them like a bull would to try to breed them. And she had the cow following her around, uh, trying to mount her all the time. So I know she's in a good heat. And I take the idea that I saw it starting last night. So I'm, I really would, my perfect day would be to put her in a pen next to another animal, let them together every hour. If she would let them mount her, wait the next hour. If she didn't let the other cow mount her, breed her right then. So I'm, it's an educated guess. If I wait till later today, I'm gonna to be too late. And I can't really come down in the middle of the day. I'll be busy. So I'm gonna breed her this morning. And the first step is to get, I use the water thaw. I've got a little temperature gauge in here. I get the water at uh, 95 to 98 degrees. And I'll bring it in. And when I get the semen out of the tank, this is a semen tank full of nitrogen. It has absolute zero. And I have probably 15 to 20 minutes that I should get this all done, inseminate the cow, and be on to my next job. So we'll take, and this stuff is so cold, it actually burns. And don't tell the inseminator, or all the big wigs that I do it this way, because you're supposed to use little tweezers. But with my hands not being the best, I don't go for the tweezers. I use my fingers. And you'll notice I have it all, uh, short horn written here and the cold is a short brown swiss so I know which canister to pull up. They tell you you have about 10 seconds when you pull the semen up to the neck of the tank. And I have, that's not the one I want so I'll go back down. There's the number I'm looking for. And this is a milk and short horn bowl. I put it in there and I have to wait approximately a minute and in the meantime while I'm waiting for that minute I cover everything back up and you always have to keep this when you're not using the tank or getting semen out otherwise your nitrogen will go faster than the normal storage time that it keeps. I'm pretty sure my tank is a 10 week tank and while I'm waiting I take what they call the sheath or the gun, I put the sheath over it and try to make sure it's warmed up a little bit. Uh, lots of times when it's colder in the winter time, I'll take it in and just stand by the stove in the parlor for a couple minutes. I get my glove ready. I keep a, a lube in the parlor where I'm going to do the breeding. I make sure I've got my sheath ready so I can put it on. And I'm gonna have to cut the little uh, straw. straw open. The water kills semen, so I have to make sure that I dry it off good when I get it out. And you, would, you wanna be careful not to bend and mutilate anything, but you just dry it all off and the side of it, probably you can't see it, but this is Blaine, uh, is the name that I will write in my book. I'll keep the straws. His uh, 
Shorthorn registration number is on here. Uh, there is the semen number. It's from 7M S359, which signifies that it's a select sire's bull. And the numbers I can keep in my records so that if I go to register the calf, which hopefully I'll be able to, it'll be a heifer. And you'll notice on one end, there's a little straw or cotton plug in there. So that's the end I put in the gun. And when I push, when I am in the cow, that's what's gonna eject the semen into where I wanna put it, which I'll show you in a second as we go in the parlor. Then I take, this as the sheath. You run the sheath over. They have little donuts on them so you can lock them in place. And then if it's summertime, you could just carry it in your mouth. This is very normal. But when it's colder weather, I always take it and put it down near my armpit where it's a little bit warmer. Now we'll go in and I'll show you where in the cow. We're going to try to deposit. Here's my leg, girl. I made a quick little sketch. I'm not really sure if everybody sees it, but I will reach in the cow over top. This is my rendition of a, a this is the cervix, and then the uterus, which breaks down into the horns, and then the little fallopian tubes, and you have your uh, ovaries down in there. Good. If you have good feeling in your hand, you can reach down in, palpate the, the ovaries. You can tell if there's what they call CLs or follicles, and you really can fine tune exactly what you're doing. My feeling's not that great, so I'm, sometimes I think I know what I'm doing, but sometimes I don't. But I'm gonna try to get in, and you can almost like slip your fingers under the cervix, kinda hold it with your thumb, and there's three ring areas. It's like you're going down a hallway. I try to describe it, say you were in a submarine and you're going down through and then there's the small portholes that you kind of climb through. Well, it's that type of idea. And depending on the age of the cow, if they've been injured in any way, sometimes getting through there uh, is, is a trick with age, the older cow. This is the call. She's our one and only milking short horn. Um, she was born here on the farm and she goes to the fair every year. Does pretty well. She's a little bit older cow now, so um, needs a little more care probably than some of the animals we have, but she's a good girl. Should I get up there with you? I think. Can you there? Yeah. Oh. You move up and slowly reach in the cow. And as you go, if you remember the picture I showed you, you just kind of slide your hand along and you run into the cervix. And it's not really very far in. I mean, a lot of people get the impression when you talk to them and you get talking about breeding animals. It's not, and this is one of the, the parts a lot of people can't understand, but lots of manure sometimes is in your way, and it's hard to feel, so you just kind of empty out the canal. Oh. But that's below where you yeah. have to go in. Oh. But it pushes on the other. Oh. But right there, I'm already can feel, oh. The uterus is right there, and behind it we have uh, the horns. And one thing about, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure she's in heat on the left side, which is her left side, because you can actually feel, it's like they're, they're limp and just lay there, but when a cow is in heat, or as we say, bullying, uh, everything, we call it tones up. Now, I am right to the beginning of the cervix, 
I've entered easily. There's number two, there's number three. Now, you can do two things when you get here. You can either deposit your semen just after and you push it in slowly. After you get through the cervix, just slowly put it out. Or some guys who are really confident, I do it sometimes, but not a lot because of the more feeling of it. But you oh, can actually go in the horn where you know the side that she is uh, ovulating off from. And you check the gun and make sure that you deposited everything. And when I went to school for this back in, I think it was 69, they told us you're supposed to say, uh, as you deposit the semen, one more uh, great heifer calf or something to that effect. And by saying that, you deposit your semen in slow. So hopefully, in Third, well now with the ultrasound and actually if you wanted to or blood testing in 28 days you could tell if she's pregnant. Uh, chances are we will have it done by our veterinary so it will be more like six weeks and then he can hand calculate her and tell by that. Well hopefully that gave everybody the rundown on one of the things we do. It's just part of our day. Now we've got our other chores to do, feed the cows, put in some more corn, and we'll possibly run into something else we can video for you to keep you informed. Everybody have a good day. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>